Um, so good stuff. So how how are you doing with uh, Backyard Brains? I mean, that's I mean, that's all, your full time gig. Yeah, that's my full time gig for uh, for ten years. Uh, I started ten years ago uh, when I was in grad school. So last year we did a million dollars in, in revenue from sales of our kits. Yeah. Uh, and then seven hundred thousand from grants, uh, research grants that we're doing for the NIH. Um, and so we're trying to shrink the grants and increase the sales for education market. Oh, interesting. That's an interesting point. Because, uh, you know, I looked at your stuff and you're, um, you know, I was pleased to see that you got this dilemma of R&D versus sales. Like, I looked at your team and it seems that that's an issue. I know we're going through an issue, like Katharina and I are here. Um, we're always in the conflict of how much you do R&D versus actual business development. And I can say that our product... OSC has not scaled. I mean, I've done a bunch of stuff over the last decade, but we're not getting there. So uh, I think it's time for business development and kits are a part of that. So I know it's been a struggle for, for us. So I wanted to hear how, like, did you have that conflict initially or was it immediately clear that, okay, you got to get some revenue streams happening? No, that's how we got, that's how we got the, uh, so, the, so I, I suspect that without the NIH grants, we would not, I would not be here today. Really? Uh, so, in order to, because probably for the same reason, uh, you know, with open source ecology, no one knows they need that, right? So you have to first yeah. of all create the market and then sell to the market. Yeah. So uh, with open source neuroscience DIY kits, no one in schools think they need this uh, or even know that it exists. So, right. A lot of our work has been trying to create this market, trying to create a need that, did, that didn't exist. Uh, and so we've been doing that a lot through the TED Talks um, and through kind of popular uh, media and, and by writing articles where we're like outbound or uh, our marketing and kind of... Recording is on. All right, so the marketing campaigns have all been sort of... Uh, Writing articles for other yeah. you know, magazines to talk about, like we did homeschool journals, we did like all these other things. That we don't have anyone who does sales and marketing at all. Uh, we did hire someone last year. One of our former employees came back, and now he's a sales and marketing person. Uh, but it's not something that we're really good at, so I'm not. I can't be the best person for <laughs> to answer those questions. Uh -huh. I don't know like you. Do. Uh, but we're kind of getting better, so we, we worked, uh, again, through the NIAs, and we found out through uh, a, it's called Niche Market uh, Assessment Program, um, that they took our product line, and they went out and did market research and figured this stuff out for us, We came back with a report, and in that report, they said, you should be working with distributors um, that know the education market. Sorry, is this the NIH people? So the NIH hired another group called, um, I've used them so many times now, uh, let's see, it's uh, F F F Foresight, F-O-R-E-S-I-P-H-E, Foresight. Uh, and I'll be willing to share with you what the, what the, what the fourth report looks like that comes back. Uh -huh. And so we've gotten this four times now, twice with the NIH. Once with uh, a, uh, another grant that we were on, uh, they, they kind of like these consultants that work for like um, kind of startup uh, people. Uh, yeah. so they're kind of like accessible to the entrepreneur, but uh, are typically paid for by some third party. Uh -huh. So what they so what they do is they look at your your product. Uh, what and they. They make a whole bunch of phone calls to people that, that could be interested in that, and they find out why they're why they are interested in you or why they are interested in you, and so they, all the feedback is good feedback. And then from there, we found out that it's just hard for schools to buy our stuff, um, just because it's uh, they would prefer to go through distributors. So 
Then we started this relationship with distributors. So now we work with uh, VWR, which is a scientific distributor for schools, um, and a few other distributors. Uh, EID, this is all going to be acronyms. But they're all, uh, they're basically, uh, huh. they have sales people that go to schools and they talk about uh, whatever's in their catalog. And then they, yeah. they, um, and so that's been uh, one of the things that so everyone it, I mean, these little things have changed our stuff uh, and then we do a lot of uh, conferences so like um, regional conferences national conferences of where we think our customers are so we do the NSTA National Science Teacher Association yeah we do uh, all these basic biology uh, teacher stuff we do uh, Our gear, and we go there, uh, and then we and we and it's funny is that these things work, uh, and it's hard, we we don't really track well, but we notice that the more that we present at conferences, the more sales that we get. So um, it might seem expensive uh, at the beginning. I know it did for us. Uh, like, like some of these booths are like ten thousand dollars just to have a a location, right? Um, Hmm. But it, over over time, a, a, a couple of customers can put big orders in, and then you, then you start paying for it. So, so um, our sales have been growing. We we're open open books, so we have a if you want to finance that back our or if you want to go to the finance link on our on our about page, it shows you all the all the sales from the beginning of the company ten years ago. Uh, our sales have been growing, so we had a twenty percent, almost twenty percent, uh, year over year growth of just, of just the product sales, um, which is good because the year before that was only like a six percent growth, and then we hired a salesperson, and I think that's helped. Um, so it just means maybe more conferences, and then he's actually calling the bank the phones and talking to teachers and stuff like that. Uh, and so then the the other thing that I'm so every year I, I, I'm a I'm a neuroscientist and like to um, like to do experiments and so we've done experiments on our on our on our web website and we know that it's not great uh, so we're switching that over to something that we could uh, more simple simplify the the, the the product line that we have um, but first we have to. Change because one of the biggest complaints is that customers don't like uh, the the fixed price on shipping, so we're going to change that over. So always like stuff that you know they're not really core to our business are kind of like stopping us from growing. And so we're just spending some time on uh, R and D just to get the process better. Uh, so in the future that we that the, this will start to uh, incrementally increase our sales. And so uh, the, and the other big thing we're trying this year. Is we're doing an experiment in Europe, and we're going to try to start um, having websites that are in languages like in Germany, uh, and then warehouse them in, in EU so that the VAT, all that stuff goes away, and we pay a little bit more upfront. Uh, see if we can increase our sales by making the uh, the purchase less less cumbersome for people in, in, in Europe. Last year, our almost ten percent of our sales were international. But eight percent of those sales were from uh, Europe, uh, so we were just thinking about trying Europe to see if we could grow that a little bit more. Yeah. Do you have uh, what's your day to day? Are you are you business development or like R and D on product? So yeah, I'm still kind of uh, involved. I, I I actually stepped out of the engineering role. I used to design all the products, but now we have a. Uh, Team of engineers that has worked pretty well now, and so we have engineering meetings where I just sort of give an idea. Like we, we kind of uh, over the past few years have kind of figured out what we are. <laughs> it took us yeah. a while to because uh, um, we start off with the cockroach stuff, but now we most of the stuff we do is human based and plant stuff, and, and it's, it's all these weird things. So we've got a cat we have four categories and two product offerings within each category, and so. Um, uh, so we're, yeah, I, I'm involved somewhat. My my job, and my and I, you know, the the ten coaching sucks. I keep asking them for help. And they never. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's not, not, not that the, the 
the, I mean, just that it's like the, the maybe it's just like the the onboarding sucks. I, I think the tech coaching has been wonderful, but I haven't had a coach in like four years. Um, and every once in a while, I'll sit down and send an email, uh, but it doesn't seem to get answered. Uh, who knows? But um, <laughs> you're, I'm glad that you're. I like your DIY coaching. This, this is cool. Uh, but, be, <laughs> um, but I feel like uh, everything that we do, we try to we try to do it in some quantitative way that we can we can measure to see if it's making a difference. And so that's uh, as a as a scientist and engineer, uh, as our approach to everything. Uh, and I think we're growing much slower than most companies, but we didn't, we haven't taken any venture capital money yet or any. We're still like a hundred percent like. Um, Bootstrapped company, so we're kind of proud of that. Uh, so, are you uh, are you a nonprofit or what's your corporate form? No, we are for profit. We are for profit. Uh, okay. Uh, and and we, we kind of run like a nonprofit. We actually run like a we actually run like a research lab. We spend all of our uh, like last year we didn't make any. We didn't make some money, uh, but we basically spend all the money we get on on. Research and development. I got. I, I, I look at my position more as a. Uh, a re, I, this is like an alternative academic universe, and so, yeah. if all the universities were to close tomorrow and you want to publish your own papers and do your own research, what would you do to get money? Right. So one thing you could do is to create science papers, and then the tools that you use to build those science papers you sell, and the people will give you money to, to be able to do that some more. So. That's what we spend our money on. So we're, uh, we spend a lot of money on, on students to run research projects. In, in Munich, Germany, just for our 10 year anniversary, do something different. So we're going to be going to, uh, to Europe for the summer. And we're bringing our, our, our students with us. Uh, and we're going to publish all of our papers. This is a senior fellowship. So these are Previous students have done their research and collected their data, but they haven't published their work. They're going to come to Europe this summer, and we're going to publish it together. So uh, that's our that's our goal. So yeah, so it's a bit. I mean, it's more of a social mission than a than a business mission. But right. uh, yeah, right. I think it's it's easier to to run a for business, I think, than a nonprofit. Right. No, I like that model because that's how we operate too. We put all our money into R and D, so because our we cannot get the funding for the full mission of what we want, so it has to be bootstrapped. Absolutely, and we can't get any venture stuff because it's too we're too far out. So not like we want to because that that can throw in some strings there. But the idea that you're funding your own R and D and that that movement grows because there's a real productivity that comes from that. That is like the best business model, and I believe that's how. I mean. That's how all of uh, the world should run, really, that you're making real products that prove themselves in the market by providing real service, not welfare from some government company or whatever, governments or whatever. Yeah, I can't say that. I mean, I, I, like I said, last year, 40% of our income came from the government. Uh, yeah. But they were, I don't, it, it is R&D, uh, but it's a product. So we are producing a product for them. The product is science publications that we're doing. So, yeah. Uh, and it, and it's just like a university. University, you write, you you work at the university to pay your salary, but then you write research grants to be able to do your research and stuff. And so, we've been fortunate enough to be able to write a, a series of grants that have been successful uh, through the SPR program. And I'm sure there's something that you could do with this in this trial as well. So, uh, with okay. your background. So, so these, um, I'm just curious. Like, so, so can you be specific? So, you're developing some product under a research grant. All of our products, everything that we've released, uh, except for a handful, which I'm going to still write grants for. So the plant stuff, I did a TED talk a couple years ago on plant electrophysiology. Yeah. Um, none of that's been funded by grants yet. That's just all, all the fun stuff that we've been doing with our R&D money that we generate. Yeah. But, we, um, but what, we, what we're going to do in the future is write a grant that will fund the development of that product into something more substantial. So... Um, that's the that's the goal is that we take and there are people that are interested in this. Uh, so the NIH, the National Institutes of Health, is interested in getting more students interested in biomedical engineering, bio, in health sciences, right? So the product that we write for them is we are going to develop tools for the classroom, uh, and 
it's going to increase your pipeline of qualified students in the years to come. So therefore, yeah. they, they think it's important. And, and then but the, the mechanism of the grant is called, are you familiar with SBIRs? Yeah, I mean, I heard of it. I never applied, but yeah, heard of it. You're doing two things. One is you're doing something that the funding agency thinks is important. Um, and the other one is that you're turning into a product that you can sell. And so they want you to be a for-profit business that's going to commercialize something, and it, and it's it's beautiful. It's beautiful because what they're saying is that there is a unmet need in the market, uh, but there are a there may be not enough people that are uh, willing to pay for it yet. So we're going to give some R and D up front, yeah. or people are not even aware that they need to have this yet. And so yeah, same same like you know with like solar power stuff, like all these things that are kind of the next generation that there's not enough market there yet. They need to build the infrastructure so you can have a market is what these grants are good for. And so for our type of stuff, it's, it works out well. And so we've been, we've now successfully written three SBIRs, four. Um, to phase one or like more than phase one? So 100K plus? We did a phase one. We have two phase ones. And then um, one of the phase ones went to a phase two. And then due to someone at TED, one of the TED fellows, the guy from NASA, uh, he told me about the phase two B. And I looked into it, and then we got a phase two B, which is like a, another three-year grant on top of your three-year grants. Uh, so uh, we've been funded for almost 10 years now on these grants. And we just got a new phase one last year, which is going to be two years. And we're going to try to turn that into another three more years afterwards. So Are there any... Are there any limitations on open source product development there? Like, are you, uh, if you pr produce a product that is open source, like we do, do they care or it doesn't matter? No, they don't care. All of our stuff is open source as well, so they don't care. What's your uh, license? I don't even know. It's uh, open software. Most of our stuff is uh, hardware based. Right. So we just put the open hardware, we give away our schematics and, and you, source. You're code. like Ashwa Open Source Hardware Association compliant? Yeah, I'm not sure if we're compliant or not. Uh, to be honest, I, I, you and a few other people have asked me, I, I don't know. I just give away the stuff. Uh, and I, I'm not too so, concerned. <laughs> okay. So let me run this by you. So if somebody wants to start a business doing the same thing as you as you do, making kits, what, was your, what would your response be? We have a thing called distributive enterprise. That's That's our model where we develop businesses, but then we actively try to distribute that business after we prove it. Because uh, so that we know what we're talking about, but but our goal is to get that out there because we think it's good. Do you operate in a similar way, or what would happen if, like, for example, I asked you, Greg, okay, can can OSE sell the uh, whatever kit to generate revenue to bootstrap fund its its operations? Yeah, no. uh, it's funny because this has come up a number of times, and so uh, but they've always been like I, I've always been like really scared of this. But yeah. the more I the more I thought about it, the more I would realize that even if even if you wanted to, uh, even if I said no, you could easily just read. Um, so the open source is more of a it's more of a marketing thing for us than than a, uh, <laughs> than something I really think about too often. Right. So. Uh, and a bit, I mean, it's probably not, I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I used to think about a lot more about open source maybe three or four years ago than I do now. Yeah, I yeah. Well, our, our idea is, I mean, our mission is to end artificial scarcity. So that's a pretty big thing. And, and we can't do it ourselves. So we, I mean, that's just part of the game for us that we think about it a lot. Now, uh, but, that, but then a practical question, like, is would you see anything right now like, for example, we have robotics, like the universal axis that you can build 3D printers with it. You can br build circuit mills, CNC torch tables, and heavy-duty uh, machines out of this. X, Y, or whatever they're called. These, uh... Uh, let me just show you a link for what this thing is. But, like, I was one, – one practical question is that I don't know if you're looking for – like, because I would – of course, if you're open source, I would ask for collaboration. Um if you and I are interested in working on some products together. So, for example, take a look at this. Uh, see if one, one of the questions I want to ask you, is there any common area where we can develop kits together? But this is one that I thought. Um, 
but I don't know if you use any of this kind of stuff. It could be used for liquid handling robots, for like genetics work or whatever. But um, just just to wrap up that area, like for example, if you want, what we do is things like an open source Raspberry Pi uh, tablet. You know, okay, maybe you can use that as an open source product that you distribute as well. But I don't know. I don't know if you have any interest in that kind of stuff because there's hardware. We're into hardware of all sorts and the machines for making hardware. So if there's any anything that could be put into the education context, we'd like to do it. Now, for us, the major realization that I've had um, all the time, I was like, okay, we're going to prototype. We're going to burn all our money making machines, you know, built a hundred or so uh, or whatever. But... I've always been reluctant to go to schools because, okay, how do you get the students to contribute anything meaningful? Now, we learned some things over the years, which is by modular design and a construction set approach, you can absolutely get school kids involved in this because you can break things down into very small bite-sized chunks. And if you create kits like uh, constructor kits, basically like the souped up versions of Lego and all that, or like Mindstorms or whatever, Things like that where students are actually at a fundamental level contributing to all the different R&D and small points. Like R&D at the end of the day, uh, in my view, is an inspiration. Like, like, um, like Edison says, it's, and it's 99% perspiration. So there's a lot, a lot of busy work, so-called busy work, but also publishable stuff that people can do. Uh, just to give you a simple example, like... Students can be learning Arduinos, hydraulics, 3D printing, and more by building a scale model of a tractor that actually works with real working water-based pump, actuators, real controllers. So basically everything on a small scale that mimics the large machines and could be used both for kids and real education and real prototyping. So I believe in that, and that's, that's, that's where I'm... Uh, yeah, that, that, that sounds good. I mean, it's similar. I mean, we're doing it in a more in a science-based thing, but this is very similar. These are these are uh, teaching tools of, uh, and some of these we do into real use, but these are I mean, similar. Our stuff can be used for real science papers. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the and, and the selling point for us is that this is the same type of data that's being collected by research labs around the world. But you're going to be able to do it in your classroom. And the same thing, you'd say, this is, these, these machines are being used around the world for manufacturing. And so, I, yeah, I can see uh, a lot of similarities. But it's funny because everyone, everyone will look at the problem the way that they look. Like, so, like, when I see this, when I see what you're doing, I, I, I look at this idea of this um, of a grant based to help fund the R&D so that you can use more of your sales dollars, whatever you're on, wherever you uh, to fund some other aspects of it for and, and for yeah the thing which where, where are you based in uh, Kansas City area Kansas City Missouri uh, so in Michigan the other nice thing is that they have uh, matching grants and so when we submitted our last grant we got one hundred twenty five thousand dollars to spend on marketing campaigns and stuff that normally you can't get funded by grants mm. like pure sales type stuff yeah uh, so anyway so that, that i'll give you a warning that i have a i have a very <laughs> i'm good at writing grants so I, I look at the very narrow focus field of what can i write a grant on this this will write itself i think there would be a number of organizations i mean a teaching tool to teach you stuff uh we actually submitted a, and i wish i would have talk to you back then. I didn't think about you. I didn't think about this at the time. But uh, we submitted a grant to the NIH in 2015, got rejected, uh, for building a class called um, How to Build Any Scientific Instrument. And the idea was to use a tool, telescope, microscope, yeah. uh, you know, rigs, uh, PCR machines, this type of stuff. Um, oh. and, I think, and then how to build the tools to build the tools would be another way. That's kind of where you guys are coming. So where are you at on that? Did you get that? We never got it. I, never, I, I kind of moved away from it. We're, we are sitting another one uh, this year, but it's going to be on just like uh, train the teacher. So another way you can do it is through 
uh, these R25 grants, uh, which are teaching grants. Uh, so I'm, I'm submitting one that's $100,000 a year for, for five years. Um, this is to the NIH, uh, but they have other ones that are out there. And, and, and the idea is that this is, uh, I'll tell you the description is like um, giving research experience to undergrads. Oh, yeah. So, so I mean, that could be easily oh, yeah. applied. Uh, and so, um, and I think maybe with the, uh, maybe USDA or maybe the NSF, or there's all these other people have their own version of the SBIRs. And they all do their own R25. These are all generic terms that other, like all the organizations use. R25 just means it's a education grant. And so those are the ones that we go after. But we go also we also go after just pure SBIRs, and it's, and it's funny because we're competing against people building heart pumps for real, you know, life and death situations, and then there's our bug like cockroach stuff. But uh, you know, people are judging, and they said, "All right, well, you know, this cockroach one is important." So it's, who am I to judge why they chose us, but they did. So um, yeah, it's uh, and so these are called. Uh, Omnibus. So it means anyone can submit any crazy idea. Uh, there's no call for it. There's no one saying, "Hey, we really need neuroscience education." It's just so is this R25? So the R20. So the, uh, this is SBIR and R. Uh, R25s are always asked for, um, and there's a lot of them. And so I made a list of the ones at least in neurosciences. Uh, and some of them you have to be university, so. I can't do it. Uh, that's the only bad part about not being a part of the university is that there's still this old boy network of uh, you have to be a university in order to teach neuroscience or to do, yeah. to do proper training. Um, the other thing I'll tell you that it will help you, and it's helped me quite a bit, is that you'll find out if you if you submit a grant, they're going to come back and tell you, you know, uh, good luck. Yeah, you're not going to be able to do this. So you have to come in with someone that has like, uh, so we use Purdue University uh, as the education company. We, we can't publish education research on our stuff. And so we partner and give a very small portion of our grants to, to some of the university at, at Purdue University. And she will take our Whatever we develop in the classroom and, and measure it, make sure it's do what we say we're going to do. So that's like this, um, you know, this, this kind of, and I like it because she's not part of backyard brain, so she's like a, a objective lens in a theory. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's, that's been helpful for us, and, and that took us a while to figure out the first few grants we did we to do it ourselves, but then we kept saying this, this, this criticism over and over again about our, our lack of educational theory to be able to produce these brands. And so we had to switch over to having a kind of a hybrid approach with the, with the university. Um, so what specific, was that SBIR? What, what was that? That's SBIR. So the SBIR grants I, I do with a, a, a sub-award to, to Purdue University. And I worked with her. I was just one of my colleagues that I worked with in the past. I did the, I did a course for Harvard and like seven years ago, six, seven years ago. And uh, she was the, <laughs> the grad student that was working with our data at the time. And then, then she got a position at, at uh, Vanderbilt, and then at, then at uh, Purdue, and then now she's a professor, and, and she's helping us. We work together, so that's, a good, that's been a good relationship. We bring on people as well. Like uh, the, the other nice thing about the grants is that it allows you to find someone in the field that you normally wouldn't work with, um, but they could provide some value to you, and so you can write them a nice story. Hey, we'd like to include you on the grant. We'll pay a month of your salary, you know, every year for the next four years, uh, and that gets their interest right away. And they're like, okay, sure, we'll work with you. And, <clears throat> and if it works out, then, you, then it's cool. You have this relationship with the person where you can talk to them about you're paying that, but you're with other people's money, right? So it's, yeah. it's just another. Another nice thing about the grants. How much? How much you pay, for example, the lady at Purdue? Um, uh, so her, 
I think she took me. I can tell you exactly. She, we had a two million dollar grant, and we paid her like I think one hundred eighty thousand, so not much, uh, less than ten percent uh, of our grant. But that was her, a grad student and an undergrad. So all three of those um, for two years. Two years. And then, so what was the general pattern? You're developing a kit and, and like there's real data that they measure, they validate your results yeah, well, and well, stuff. Uh, so kit in phase two of our grant and phase two B, which is what this one is. They are, they're actually putting cameras in the classroom and watching students and teachers interact with the devices, and then they're measuring uh, behavior outcomes. So they'll look at, they'll ask some questions about their self. Uh, do you feel like you can do this as a scientist? Like these are questions that are really hard to answer. Like uh, I, I can see myself actually becoming a scientist. Um, and so they'll ask you very like various questions that will try to tease that information out. Yeah. And, they look. Their actual data are these video interactions, and they and they score them based upon how often is the teacher interacting with the students, how often are students interacting with each other, and so that's their their. My interest is does does these tools allow teacher to allow students to feel more um, confident in science? Right. These are things that I could sell because that's important for uh, parents to know that. Uh, and then does it hit the, the guidelines that are required for the for states to do this, right? So that's the second thing. But what she's interested in, the Purdue lady, is a researcher. So she wants to show that the reasons why these are happening is because of what this tool allows them to do. And so she's looking at something completely different. But what's cool is that she's going to publish papers on that, and then that's going to help us get more grants in the future because if we can then cite these are the things that happen with our products. And, and so it's like this... It's kind of fun. So we, we do that, and, and, I, and we just submitted a new grant, which is an engineering-based one. It's a robot that uses a, a, a little artificial neural network, a spiking neural network, to see and to move. And so the students basically drag and drop neurons and wire them together to get the robot to make behaviors. Uh, so that's a complete hardware-based, no biology at all. Um, and so we were partnering with Purdue again, uh, and they're going to do t testing in the classroom. And with the, I've already talked to them. They were here last week, and they were going to do another grant on the plant stuff. Uh, and they're working with us on some of the workshops over the summer. And so I think it's been a good kind of symbiotic relationship. <laughs> is the person yeah. from the education department? Yeah, so this is all educational based. It's just because we, we lack that credibility, and it brings so much to the table if we can yeah. say that it's uh, someone. Um, with a PhD, and, and, and to be honest, when she writes her paragraphs for our grant, I don't understand what she's saying. Uh, but I think the, the, the reviewers in the room that know their shit about education, that's, that's the paragraph they're looking for, to know that we're okay. Yeah. Um, anyway, so it's Do you know any people uh, in my area? Like, okay, so this is STEM education. This is about bringing education on real industrial productivity on a small scale, kind of... Um, the micro factory concept, the open source economy, or basically the future, so-called future of production kind of deal. City, are we actually spent a lot of time in Kansas City. You know the Kaufman Foundation? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're based there. And we did, uh, my co-founder did a full year uh, fellowship with them. Uh, and it was called a, it was called the Entrepreneurial Postdoc. Um, and so we still have ties with them and so our, our interact with them a little bit. Um, not quite a bit. I mean, I mean, I've seen that conference and talked to them. And I saw someone at TED talk to them. Um, foundation. So they're based in Kansas City. Our teachers are based out of Kansas City, just oddly enough. Um, the people on our grants, so I actually pay taxes in Kansas City for teachers uh, in Kansas. Um, so Brad Williamson has uh, helped us write a grant uh, to get to write a book. Around. That's the other, yeah, we're we have a book deal signed last month with MIT Press, uh, and we're working on that, and that got funded through the grant. So that, um, so it's just so like, anyway. That's why I keep looking at the grants because the grants allow us to invest 
time and money that we don't really have in areas that, that um, like for example, I'm a company, I would never pay someone at Purdue to set up cameras and do this type of shit, but uh, not only do we pay for that, we also pay for our engineers here, the ones that are working on all of our products are being paid by these grants, and so this is like yeah. this is like free money that allows you to free up more resources to be able to do stuff if you want to do. Who's writing the book? So the, the grant covers the, the book writer, or basically you're gonna be yeah, kind of like the knowledge of the- My co-founder, Tim, you, you've never met Tim. Maybe you haven't met Tim. I, I brought up with Ted once. Um, he lives in Chile, uh, in South America, and I live here. And so we're, co- we're co-writing the book. Um, and so- With who? I write, I said we're both with two author books. This could be uh, Gage and Marzullo, so my, my co-founder who I started the company with. Uh, he lives in South America, but we've been working together over Google Docs, and we have about, uh, it's a 50,000 50, word book, but we have about 1,000 words written so far. <laughs> it's due in October. So, uh, but a lot of it is going to be based upon the open search experiments on our website. Um, and so that might be an interesting model for you because uh, you're kind of very similar to us. Uh, so this is with MIT Press. Um, and there's a, uh, I can see this being something that may be interested in some of that. I can share with you the book proposal that we wrote and uh, some other stuff. The reason why I wrote a grant to the NIH saying that we were going to publish the book in, in phase 2 B. our very last aim was to make a book. And I tried talking to every Hopefully, Mifflin, you know, all, uh, school book companies, and they, none of them want to touch us. Yeah. Because neuroscience is not already a multi-billion dollar field yet. So they don't want to, they don't want to explore anything that's not like huge. And so, um, so I had to go back down and I talked to Scientific American Press and I talked to MIT Press and I like it. MIT press meant we have a good chance to work with that really, really great. So that's another business model, which is writing a book that gives you credibility and it gives you an in- income stream um, to do that. It takes time though, that's what bad part. So so I've been changing, so uh, I now book Tuesdays and Thursdays completely free. I don't put any meetings or anything, and I write I write during those two days. So. Yeah. Yeah. My I mean I'm I think I mentioned that I'm working on a book right now. I got an offer from, I forget who it is. It's these, uh, I, I visit them in New York, say I forget the name right now, escapes me, but I can do the book deal thing. I was, my plan was to go ahead with just the business development part, because right now it's, okay, kits, 3D printers, some simple things that we can sell, and let that be a little bit of the fuel or proof of the extreme manufacturing methods that we're developing. Now, there is a very interesting point there that I think we can prove, and that is that with a distributed organization, because I'm really crazy about this distributed organization thing, and I refuse to go centralized as in like start a factory. I want to train individuals who who run small mom and pop shops doing state of art R&D. So the idea there is to show, part of it is to show that that industrial product, even a small scale, like a one or a small family, one person or a small family business can do better than a typical, uh, typical factory. Mm-hmm. And I've got initial data that completely shows that, and and I think I can I can show that. But I thought it was important as I go into the book to show, okay, and here's what we're doing with the three D printer compared to, for example, Lowsbot, the leading open source company, or compared to Prusa Research, which is the large, they sell 8,000 printers in a month, and here's what we're doing. Our efficiencies are 3 three to 10x theirs in terms of productivity, like labor productivity and revenue, like that kind of stuff. So I'm trying to do that part, uh, focusing on that before I really touch the book seriously, because part of that would be that, okay, we're getting revenue streams where we are actually funding, like if we're talking about, you know, funding the revolution that we're saying, okay, we've got solid initial evidence that it's possible through this uh, open source distributive enterprise process, meaning that we work only with open, open stuff. We collaborate openly on open product development with others, but right there we're showing, okay, we can make the economics happen in a 
really compelling way because one of the things I find out is that of course any of this hippie shit is gonna succeed only if um, you, you get some serious productivity as a backbone of any such operations yeah. So, um, yeah that's where I'm at on that cool yeah so that, but that's the the approach we're doing so, so we're still um, I'd like to see yeah. your book proposal if you can send it yeah, I'll send that to you. Uh, yeah. uh, it was uh, I'll send it to you. Um, and I think that there and it's funny, I didn't know, I didn't know these these sent out for peer review, um, when these MIT press did. And so I thought I thought I was just talking to him and he wanted to see uh, Table of contents and a sample chapter. So I just like threw some stuff together, but then he sent it out to like three different people, and I got these reviews back. <laughs> He's like, you know, uh, I would hire a editor to make sure you fix your typos. And that was yeah, that. <laughs> I didn't know that it goes out for that. Anyway, I'll, I'll send that to you. Um, right, and I'll send. I can also send to you our the foresight. Um, yeah, foresight report. Yeah, the niche assessment program. Uh, uh, and, but the other, the other thing that the uh, I'll tell you about it. So there's another program. Um, you know, Peter Haas. Yeah. Uh, so I, I just submitted a grant with him on it uh, oh, no, to do, yeah, to do what's called a. Uh, I what's it called? It's another type of uh, business accelerator program um, funded through the NIH uh, and, and it's like uh, 40 hours over eight weeks and then you fly to some city and then they, they pair you with mentors so um, that grant. oh man okay um, is that's a grant you apply for that's one and so yeah we, <laughs> Peter kind of fucked it up but oh well uh, because we had uh, I Corp is the name of that one, uh, and that's, that's a that's a program that goes across all. It's like it's like an S pair. It goes across NSF, uh, and NASA. It's just like this. Uh, a bit like Foresight. It's like a, a for profit company that partners with. Uh, but they do uh, apparently they do a really really good job of like really focusing on how you're gonna how you gonna turn your this idea into into something that you can sell right. So that's yeah. the. So we, we did that from the neural robot. Uh, and since Peter does robot stuff, Peter's like, he's like, can you commit to this project? He's like, I don't commit to 40 hours. Like, don't say that. You just say yes. And then you did 40 hours. <laughs> but uh, all right, we'll see. We'll see if we get the grant. But, the, uh, but that's another. So the, uh, and then it, I can tell you, when you want to get these grants, and then everything opens up. So. We now have working with the state of Michigan on a series of grants to get more marketing help, get website development help, like all the stuff that, that I'm not good at naturally. Uh, we're getting outside experts for free from the state of Michigan to be able to help us do that. Yeah. So, so that's the MEDC, the Michigan Economic Development Council. I'm sure there's an equivalent in Kansas for that. Yeah. Yeah. Are you using that? When you started, um... Backyard Brains, did you have a, like, um, I guess, what's the answer to the question of research versus production? Like, tell me about your production side. Is that challenging, or that's like, you just have it? it was, so in, when we first started, probably the same as you, uh, production was me, and um, so I, I built every board for the first year, I would say, hand builds cut the wood, we literally cut wood. Um, yeah. Then we switched over to plastic, or uh, laser cut stuff that was easier. And so our production unit now has not changed that much from that day. <laughs> so we still laser cut the sandwich, which it still looks very DIY. But what has happened um, is uh, we've reduced the cost significantly what it costs us to produce it. Yeah. So we did that. And so the first hire we, we did was a, was a production person, a production manager. And they would they were hiring people out of makerspace 
to assemble these kits. And we didn't know what we were doing in the beginning, so we paid per part because that was something we could wrap our heads around. So we know we, we it cost us five dollars of labor to build this part. We can sell it for fifty dollars. Mm-hmm. Also, so twenty bucks for parts. Then we know we're running twenty five dollars profit. So we did that for the first maybe two and a half, years, three years, I would say. I my part. So we had a manager that was kind of managing how much we made at the end of the week. And then we realized that it was that when production started to grow, um, it was really stupid to be paying people by part because they were getting so much faster at it over years, and then. Uh, we couldn't get them to do other like, new R and D production, like of some product that we haven't figured out what the prices would be. Yet. So then we switched over to an hourly rate. Um, so there was a transition there, and then we started hiring more people. So that's our production right now. Our engineering team uh, is two people, and it's distributed to we have. Uh, Hardware engineer in Brazil, here in the office. Our software developer is in, is in Serbia, um, and our yeah, so it's kind of an international organization. So the um, and we just meet up on Skype and then and in the office. What's the role of distributors? Do they help you any product development, or they just want product and that's they it? They want product, but they do help us in marketing. So what? So for example. Those ten thousand dollars booth that I was talking about, uh, we don't pay those at NSTA and at the NABT. So these are these are these are um, big big booths of which we're a small section of that. But we get to talk to a lot of customers and we get to give demos, and give out our cards, but we don't pay for that spot. So that all we pay for is just the hotel and airfare we get there. Uh, so that's been that's been the biggest. And advantage of distributors plus like making money in your sleep. They are selling your stuff. <laughs> and I would love to see, I haven't done that. Because, like last year was the first year we tried that. Uh, and then toward the end of last year, we said, now we're getting like purchase orders like two or three a week. Uh, Greg, you cut out there. Let's see, maybe. Uh... Recording is on. Greg, can you reset your computer? All right, I'm back. Yeah. Uh, s- sorry. Um, yeah. Um, what's a typical distribution deal like? I mean, what, what like when you talk about purchase orders? This yeah. is from schools. Yeah, schools. So most of our most of our orders come in through our fax machine. Um, these are school districts or universities, and so I didn't know what a purchase order was until. I started doing this, and then it took me a while. People ask me questions. I, I had no idea. So actually, it's funny. You go on our website now, and you say a purchase order. We explain the purchase order process. But it's funny now looking at it. I don't know why I put that on there, but I did that because I didn't know what it was. And so I, yeah. But yeah, so most of our stuff come in through purchase orders, our large sales. So um, the, the companies that are the distributors, who are they? Like, what's what's the deal? Is it like by percent or What's the typical? Yeah, so we get that. So, uh, and I wasn't sure how this is going to work. But they've been happy with it. We've taken what we've taken our product sales price and taken thirty percent off of it, and we sell it to the distributor for that price, and then they make up the difference by selling it at our price. So they're happy enough to do that. Um, so it's not fifty percent off; it's thirty percent off. So it's thirty percent for distributors. Yeah. Uh, so. 
that's the that's where we've been going with that. So um, and they've been they haven't pushed back. Uh, Amazon's the same. Am, Amazon's around thirty percent, maybe thirty three percent, something like that. What we sell on Amazon. And that's something we don't do well. I mean, we can probably more do better with Amazon at least. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so no, like on this thirty percent. So that means is that one distributor or many of them? So we did. I mean, so we did our very first um, exclusive distributor agreement, uh, and I can share that with you as well. Um, this is for a regional area, so people that are rich in the Middle East, some of them are about only do the Middle East. And, and, like, so we gave our distributor agreement. They said, "Now we want an exclusive one." So then we worked on some terms, and they and we gave them. We, we don't sell that much to United Arab Emirates anyway. Uh, so there is a distributor that wants to market for our stuff, so we gave them the rights to be able to sell in, in United Arab Emirates. And the idea is that we sell to them on a discount. Um, they make up for the rest of it for themselves. So, so what's the, can you break down your economics so your production? I mean, how much profit do you make per well, sale? Well, well our, we're about, we charge about four or five times more than what it costs us to make it. It used to be twice as much as what it cost us to make it than when we first started out. But now, because of the scales of our, of our production, um, we can actually charge, we're actually charging about four or five times more than what it costs us to make it. So when we, when we have to get these discounts, these 30% discounts, then we're okay, because we're, we're still well above our margin, right? So, um, and then for example, like our, we sell a kit for $130. It may cost us about 30 bucks to, to manufacture. Um, so it's like $100 of profit that we have if we sell these kits. Um, and so that's how, uh, that's our business model. We, we charge more than it costs us to make it. <laughs> so even, what's funny is that even though it's a, it's a ripoff, I mean, there's like, that's a huge markup, right? But our competitor. Sorry, would you, sorry, sorry, would you mind take, turning off your camera? I think the connectivity is a little yeah, bad. Sure, 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 sure. So say that, so even though it's a ripoff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, even though, uh, let me turn this off a bit. So even though we're charging between you know, 400 and 500% more than it costs us to make it, yeah. we're still 10% of what our competitors cost. 10% <laughs> of your competitors? Yeah, uh, someone who's selling this to the university uh, is selling a product for about $1,200, which we sell for $120. Wow. Uh, and it costs us about twenty to twenty-five dollars to produce that. And so you can imagine what the markup of them, but they don't have that many customers, right? There's not that many people. Oh, so wow. they're, they're, they're trying to. Um, anyway, so there's that. Wow, that's excellent. Hmm. Do you see any possibility of any collaboration on any tools, any kits? I think not. Not right now. Uh, what, I, what I would like to do, so in the, in the I'm, tr I'm trying to move away from the mechanical stuff just because it's been a pain uh, for us to manufacture. We, we still do things very DIY. So we use a laser cutter or a 3D printer. Yeah. And it's to, to scale that has been a, a real pain in the ass. We have, we have racks of 3D printers, and it doesn't matter how many we have. It's a still manual nightmare. Uh, so we started moving to injection molded parts um, whenever we can. Uh, we have like large enough items. But from what I can see from your stuff, uh, we do, we, we, there could be a, a possibility, yeah, like I said, for this type of a course where we, we run a, a training course where it's about these building these tools, which I think is important. Any scientist needs to know how to do these things. Um, I think, in order to be a productive scientist, you have to know how to build things. Uh, so I think that's where you and I can work together on something. Um, and possibly on a, on a particular project, not a product, yeah. And we can check. So what we do is we can focus on projects. So like uh, a looming response to a grasshopper. Um, and then every project needs to have some apparatus built. And then depending around 
uh, you know, we could commercialize that product into a product. That's how a lot of our inventions are made. So we can make something first for a project, and then if it looks like it's something that could be used multiple times, we'll sell it for you know, as a product. And when you say a project, is it a research project or is it a, a kit project for schools? Uh, this would be a, a, a research project that we would do internally with our with our intern, with our fellows. Um, so like a research project, where, and like, like for example, like uh, we did we did something with dragon with a laser pointer on it, and we would control the laser pointer with the servo in a, in a controlled way that we could then. Uh, trick the dragonfly into thinking that's speaking a bug. So that that's something where I, I can see that you guys would be able to get a lot of help on that, right? Um, and then in the end, if if it's something that we think that other people would want to do, we will sell that as a product. Um, like a little like a little dragonfly uh, thing. Anyway, so something like that. And, and that that's the only that's one example. We did stuff with uh, Songbird. We've done stuff with like actually a lot of a lot of like RPG you know, control servos um, uh, type stuff for our for our experiments. And then we looked to see if we could sell this as a product. When you do a project, do you typically get papers out of that by collaborating with some academics, or how do you do that? Um, or this is like the papers. papers? Yeah, these are for internal papers that we publish internally, and so we put them out. Like, it's for publication number one, uh, but number, but actually number one is we put it on our website as an experiment that you could do with our equipment. That's important for us to show, to continue to show that you can use our stuff to do research. And so then, uh, then we publish it in a peer-reviewed journal article, uh, and then after that we will we could sell that whatever that equipment was. Back to our customer base after we publish it. For the peer-reviewed journal, do you always need a a collaborator from a university, or you can do that independently? We do that independently. Uh, we we often do collaborate though. Um, uh, if it's a lot of our stuff is kind of uh, reinventing the wheel, so we'll find something from the literature and then we will redo it in a DIY way. So sort of like. Using expensive equipment, we will build our own equipment and then we will publish a paper on it. We will invite that author to come back and, and help us on the educational side. Uh huh. Huh. That could be a strategy for us where we look at okay, here's an interesting melting 3D printer that prints in metal. Now we're going to develop that for the DIY and c contact the <clears throat> the authors and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's been good. it's been good for us. I mean, it's been. Um, and it allows you to expand your network as well. So, um, yeah, the, we're writing a paper right now with someone from Princeton who I would never would have talked to otherwise, but uh, we're collaborating on a project. Uh -huh. um, so you contact them and say, hey, we got some cool stuff we're doing on this. And yeah, and so, I mean, uh, slowly, I mean, it's been our uh, fifth year of writing the internship program, program and our tenth year as a company. Slowly, um, People have heard about us, but first, so for the most part, we're not really well known. So I have to introduce ourselves. Hey, you know, I've been doing this for a while. Uh, it was really nice because Ted did a show about our, our summer project last year. And so we have six episodes, each one being done by a student um, and working with uh, some, some researcher uh, that we, we give credit to at the end. This is Ted. Sorry, who published the six episodes? Ted. Okay. Yeah. So now, yeah, so now we have nine TED Talks because six of them are that TV series. <laughs> so, uh, wow. That's yeah, it's been really, it's been helpful because it, it's, it's um, and I like the way they did it because they make it really exciting. They're very short. I would like to have been longer, but they, but they, they make it very interesting. Um, so we get stuff on like, Octopus fighting, we did stuff on mosquito sex, we did stuff on uh, like uh, how do dragonflies ca capture bugs. Yeah. Like each one goes into the lab and we build something using our makerspace to ask some really complex scientific questions using very simple tools. And so that yeah. was the, 
That's Ted Ed. This Ted. So it's, uh, I'll send you a link. It's like uh, it's Ted dot com slash series. Yeah, so I don't know about that one. Have you considered yeah, Ted Ed? No, it was a, it was a, it was a completely separate thing. I was, I'll paste the link there. Yeah. Um, okay. So they they had a grant from Facebook to produce series. And so they did six or five or six different series and that was one of the series. Um, most of their series had a different host for every episode. Uh, but because I had so many projects and I had so many students that this did, uh, I was the host and then there was uh, six different. We actually filmed seven. They didn't, they cut out one of the ones with Squid for whatever reason. They didn't think the story so good, so they didn't do it. Yeah. So these are the student projects that we've done in the past, and the, the pictures of the, uh, the students that we had. So this one yeah. of them is like a high school student, and the other two are undergrad students. <laughs> Man, the only offers for TV I get is all these reality shows, but I'm keeping away from that until we're in a better position. Yeah, well, we've been doing the same. Uh, exactly the same and all I right. keep thinking, and I keep struggling. We we will do we we do one off episodes for shows. Um, and, I, and I say that I will do it, but I have to have, I have to be on camera discussing the science of it because they, otherwise people just want to blow shit up. Right, right. Shit. No, that's a, that's a tricky one. Cause yeah, there's, can go to the yeah. common denominator pretty soon. Yeah. 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 Uh, so we've been, we've been pretty careful about, about huh, selecting ones. Yeah. yeah. We actually pitched a couple of ideas for shows that, I mean, the problem is, I don't think networks treat their audience with enough respect. I think if you build something cool that people will watch, just because it's not out there yet doesn't mean that they can't do it, right? So, Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, this yeah, sounds, we're still waiting. Sounds good. But anyway, these are my, these are my ideas. And we've been in this education market for a while. The other person you could talk to is I have a dare. Oh yeah, you talked to her a bunch, or I feel like she's too Hollywood for me. Um, right. And she's like, uh, I mean, she's she's more, but she really is this happy. And I wish I could. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't even know which questions I would ask her to be honest. I mean, like, she's venture funded. It's uh, they which they just recently switched from being a um, kind of a, a consumer model. To an education model. Oh, interesting. They laid off 20% of their workforce and they restructured their company to be education, uh, B to E, business, business education instead of B to C. They're B to E now? Hmm. Yeah, they're B to E. So they, they bought, they actually acquired a company, they acquired a, a website that um, does like streaming services for schools. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Anyone else that's in the space here? Like, what about um, um, Juliet? I don't really know what she does. Cause she's in the education space. Oh, I'm not sure if she's doing that. I know she did the breaker thing some time ago. Just kind of like entrepreneurial, interdisciplinary education stuff. But, yeah. Let me take a look. Yeah, I can see what she's up here. Yeah, I think that this, uh, since Tom left, the, the, that program is gone. It's just been a little bit more different. Yeah. Well, I, I, got, I do have a marketing coach I got from uh, through Tad, so... I'm going to work with that and see what happens. But, I mean, let's keep in touch and see. How did you get that marketing coach? How did I what? How did you get the marketing coach? Uh, well, I talked to Renee. Yes, yeah, so Renee's not there anymore. I know. I know. But uh, basically, yeah. so the story there is that I try to get connected through the TED program, but the person just, that didn't work out, and I told that to Renee, and then, uh, she said she thought that she would have somebody for me, and so so that that's how I found him. But 
I really look forward to it because we really need that. Um, but yeah, it was kind of kind of like through a little bit, not through the official program. Okay, yeah, because I, I'm, I'm struggling with that official program. I'm trying to switch over to the new one, and since Renee left, I have never had a coach since. Right, right, exactly, exactly. I, I mean, I'm not sure what happened and on what terms they left, but, I mean, Renee's not doing that, and she's doing some other thing right now for uh, coaching people, her own independent program. Were you invited to that? She had no, a... I did, I did explore the uh, coach tour. Whatever oh, story, yeah. I like that. Um, yeah, I feel like uh, I don't know. Um, I mean, I've, I've been fortunate. I mean, I got that that uh, that TV series last year for the mental rotation. I, I just feel like they um, us older Ted fellows they really want to get this. Right, right. It's kind of. I think we're kind of somewhat like that. I think they're kind hey, of prioritizing uh, other guys much more. Yeah, which is fine, I guess. You know, that's the idea of the organization is trying to lift people up from the bootstraps. Yeah. Uh, and so, it, and, I, and I told them on this other one, I because my my company is an S corp. Yeah. Which means the profits run through my personal bank account. <laughs> um, yeah. Instead of being a separate entity. So in that last survey they sent out, I got to say that I made all this money, even though I don't make this money. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it, it looked like a big success story from that. Uh, right. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we well, had this stuff with, uh, uh, and Juliet stuff. I yeah. don't think I know her that well. I don't think I've ever met her. Yeah, it doesn't Maybe. look like, um, I'm looking at the news. The latest is from 2015, so it doesn't look like she's, uh, continuing that, um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, let's wrap up here. This was really good to. All right. Well, good, 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 good with you. I'm not sure we work together, but like, I, I, I like helping you out as much as I can. So. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll send you a follow up with a couple of documents. Yeah. A book proposal. I'm going to send you my niche assessment program, the last one. We're getting another one this year. Uh, and I'll give you uh, an example of one of my agreements, exclusive agreements with. Uh, with a, with a distributor. Yeah. 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 All right. Cool. Good, good talk to you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks for the time. So we'll, we'll be in touch. Uh -huh. All right. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.